guys i'm just trying to come through real quick because i am limited on time but this is the hospital that we tried to look at and this is an article from 2013 the state pledges to examine patient treatment history at crownsville hospital I had no idea. Look at that. So that's the whole like campus of it. And um, so it's a piece of history that many in Maryland want to forget. An underfunded, overcrowded, state-run mental hospital where African-American patients lived in squalid condition, were given few helpful treatments, and were made the subject of experiments possibly against their will. Crownsville Hospital Center was eventually integrated and became a modern health facility, mental health facility. But for decades from its founding in 1911 to the 1960s, the now shuttered hospital offered substandard care to poor, sick black Marylanders, according to historians, advocates, and state officials. The department is not proud of this history, Dr. Gail Jordan Randolph, de Deputy S Secretary of the State's Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, said Wednesday at a hearing in Annapolis. It was deplorable, she said. Governor Martin O'Malley ordered health, state health officials Wednesday to form a working group and enlist an academic researcher to study the hospital's history. Um, I'm not going to try to read, I'm trying to read the things that were really jumping out at me. Here, let's see. And the hospital in Crownsville, about eight miles north of Annapolis, Opened in 1911 as the Hospital for the Negro Insane. Black mental patients were transferred to Crownsville from other state hospitals, and it became the only state mental health facility that housed them. The land had a willow farm, and patients tended the farm, grew their own food, and built the first hospital building. It sounded like some slave-ish to me. The facility remained segregated until the 1960s. It was shut down in 2004 amid budget cuts and declining patient counts. Paul Lertz, who worked at the hospital for 40 years until it closed, had poured over documents to the Maryland State Archives to research its history. Lurs said chronic underfunding and understaffing led to many problems. He quoted from articles published by the Baltimore Sun in the 1940s and 1950s that described deplorable conditions. The Sun described a dirty room for small boys who were naked and spilling food all over, all over themselves, watched by one attendant. The newspaper noted there were no schooling for young patients and epileptic children spent their days on a bare floor. In 1953, the Sun reported the sickest women were kept in a room as forbidding as a dungeon and there was not enough beds or toilets for the patients. Lurs said squalid conditions and the lack of funding and staff prevented patients often referred to as inmates from getting useful treatment. He said his research indicates lobotomies were common in the 1940s and 1950s. He also said patients at Crownsville, as well as other state hospitals, were used as subjects in mental experiments. Doctors drilled into patients' heads to drain the fluid from around their brain and to pump air or helium, he said. Patients were then somersaulted upside down and x-rayed. Other times, doctors tested drugs on patients. It's not clear whether patients always agreed to the experiments, Lurs said, but some patients were given cards to buy coffee and cigarettes at the hospital canteen in exchange for participating. That didn't seem right to me, Lurs said. 
uh, the hospital was grossly underfunded. And this is the part they got me. For real, for real. Over the, th over the years, thousands of patients died at the hospital. She said she has reviewed death certificates and documented the burial of 1,500 patients on the site. It's bodies there still there, y'all. She said the bodies of another thousand were sent to State Anatomy Board or the University of Maryland's Medical School. The stone markers at the old cemetery on the Crownsville campus show only numbers, not names. When the hospital closed, the General Assembly passed legislation that directed directed the state to preserve the cemetery. But Hayes Wham said the markers have not been ma maintained and there's no way for family members to access the cemetery yet because it say no trespassing. Hayes Williams wants to see a monument to honor patients who died at Crownsville. At a wall perhaps listing their names. The cemetery needs to be restored to the dignity it had. Yeah, that's all I'm going to read y'all. Oh, and this was six years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2013. This article is. I will try to link this um down below. But um, wow, I had no idea. It is good to know your history, guys. Like I am blown away, totally. But I had never heard that. So the little girl just looked that up over there. <sighs> Let me know your thoughts, guys. Um, this is really sickening to me.